it's your pest. And we're going to be discussing why most apartment pest control, especially for roach control, is ineffective. And we're going to show you our process on how we do it so you can make an educated decision. This is the traditional pest control can that has been used for over 50 years. When we had products that you applied it to the floor and the roaches fell off the ceiling, that was great. Unfortunately, or fortunately for you, we don't have those products anymore. So spraying baseboards around the house to control a roach infestation is completely useless. And let me explain why. Traditional apartment pest control goes something like this. Pest control guy comes in, sprays all around the kitchen, goes to the bathroom, and does the same thing. And he's done. Well, the problem is the roaches aren't on the floor because typical German roaches don't walk around floors openly unless there's a heavy population. They're inside your cabinets, they're inside cracks and crevices, and if you apply a product to the floor, you're never gonna control what's in that cabinet. This service, on average, takes about two to three minutes per apartment to perform, and only costs the landlord about one to three dollars per unit. It is designed to simply provide a minimum, minimum, pest control if there is no infestation. If there is an infestation, this no longer works. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you what a holistic pest management service includes to control roaches in your unit and why this is the most effective process that is used in hotels, hospitals, public schools, green buildings and organic facilities to control pests without contaminating your kitchen. The old traditional service, you call the pest control company and they tell you, we're gonna be there on Tuesday, you gotta remove everything from your cupboards and they're gonna spray the inside of your cabinet with a chemical, contaminating all your dishes, all utensils, the food that is in there, they're gonna to have to come back next week and go through all this again. Our service is completely non-disruptive and it doesn't contaminate any surface, any utensils, or any food in the kitchen. So let me start by let's looking at where these roaches are gonna come in. Let's look over here in corners. Now, German roaches, unlike American roaches, which are the large palmetto bugs, German roaches are what are known as thigmotactic insects, meaning they like their body touching something three quarters of the time to feel protected. Females, when they're pregnant, they're usually pregnant about every six weeks. And therefore, they don't go very far from when they're nesting because they're protecting the eggs. You see a lot of roaches running around. Usually, those are male roaches. See right over here? I don't know if you can come over here and take a look at this. See that crack right there in the wall? Okay, that's where a roach is hiding inside your cabinets and along the wall over the back roaches are going to get in this type of tight space because this is where they feel protected a spray on the floor is never going to control a roach that is hiding back there and neither is a spray because sometimes you can't get it all the way back where the roach is hiding so we're going to show you what we use and we use a three-part process where we use two different types of baits and we use an insect growth regulator to control this problem. In a case like this, we're going to take our roach bait and we're going to put it exactly where the roach is hiding. So we're going to take a little like that and we're just going to put it in there. If roach is running in there, put it up here. Okay, now compared to a traditional pesticide service, a traditional space service where you got to remove everything from your cupboards, you got to take it all out, they spray the cabinets, and then you put everything back in, this is a thousand percent less chemical in the kitchen and in places where it doesn't come in contact, but it gets placed directly where the roach is hiding. All right, so now we're going to, we, we look at something like this, we look under here, and these are holes. See this right here? Yeah, I think you're going you're to have to bring the light down. I'll bring it down a little more so your light hits. Yeah, there you go. All right. And see, that has to be treated. 
inch by inch. We fill it in there. They say roaches are in here. We're going to put it in there. The roaches are going to hide in here. And we're going to put a product in there so that the roach finds it. All right. This is an idea. See over here? These are all places where you're going to see roaches all the time, like right in here. That little crack right there, I don't know if how, how close you can get to that so you can see it. No, nope, go down. Go down. And can you see it now in here? Is it clear? So, we're doing it like that, putting it there. Now, the advantage of using this product over anything else is that we want to put it in places, not in wide open, because roaches are not going to be just hanging out there unless we actually see them hanging out there. They're going to want to be inside the hinges and places they can feel protected. So we can put it in there. Now, I see a lot of people putting roach bait all around here, and it looks really nasty. We don't. We just need to put it where it doesn't get seen. We're going to put it, I don't know if you can see the little dot inside there, but you can barely see it. The roach is going to find it. Nobody's going to see it. It doesn't look nasty. If, if a roach just happens to be in a crack or crevice, we can easily just treat it there. And we'll go over here. And we're going to treat it like that. And the roach is going to find it. That is enough bait, believe it or not, to kill about 100 roaches. Why? Because this active ingredient in this product, the way it works is it uses their biology against them. Roaches have nasty habits. When a roach eats the bait, it's going to die. When it dies, in the process, it regurgitates its food. Also, it tends to regurgitate its food to feed it to its young. When it dies, it'll go through his system and it'll defecate the product. Roaches will eat their excrement, causing a chain effect to die. And then when those roaches that die go through that process, and this will go to what is known as a horizontal effect, or secondary or tertiary kill. So it will kill literally a hundred roaches by one of them just dying. They also open up their stomach and eat the content in the stomach. They're cannibalistic. So by knowing this behavior and knowing how this product can work through the metabolism, kill the roach and then still continue to roach. This is why you only need a little bit because those carcasses that are left behind will serve as secondary bait. The process does take longer. It isn't quick. You will start seeing roaches dying within three to seven days in high populations, and then it starts to slow down. So depending on the level of infestation, with one treatment that we do, you can get between 95 to 98% control in only 30 days. But it is a slower process because it is using all this biology against them. So once we got the cabinets treated, we're moving around. You can see there's a lot of plates in there. There are things we don't want to contaminate. There's food. We're going to do the same process. Okay, we're going to put it in a place where nobody sees it. The roach will find it. All right, see like places up here, roaches are going to hide in there. See, I can if I can stick my needle in there, the roach is going to be up there. So we're going to treat all that in there. Okay, if I have to, I can't reach the cabinet in the back. We don't have to remove anything. We have handy tools to basically get it anywhere and reach places so we don't have to be getting ladders. We don't have to disrupt. And there's the product in that corner and we don't have to disrupt anything. It will move through every single cabinet systematically treating the areas where the roaches are, putting product that is barely noticed. So this product can be later removed once it dries and it's had its effect, it can be completely removed. Unlike other baits that will dry and stick to everything and turn brown or black, this bait doesn't do that. It stays where you put it. See how you have that little crack right over there? A little nymph, a German roach nymph can go in there and hide. And we're gonna go ahead and treat that little corner. And then we can treat that and do the same thing to all the cabinets. You've got medicine in here. None of it gets contaminated. All right. So now we've got like this area. We're looking at every area 
that a potential roach, see this side right here, they're going to hide there. So we can take our, 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 our bait. We can treat that little crack, you see, and leave it there underneath here. See how this is? You're going to find a lot of kitchens have infestation because they're hiding in there. So we will take the bait. We'll put our bait in there. And we're going to see how wide this gap is. You can literally have a hundred roaches just living in that little piece right there and nobody will know about it. We're going to move down to the lower cabinets. This is a step-by-step -step approach. So we're moving down here and we get to places like here. Down here there's little cracks where nymphs can hide. And we're going to go inch by inch through this kitchen. And we're going to treat it. So what about my drawers? I have roaches coming out of my drawers. That's not a problem. We don't have to contaminate where your utensils are. The roach is going to find the bait. So we're going to come around over here. And we're going to put the bait right there. And the roach is going to come out of that drawer, find it and eat the bait and we don't have to contaminate it. Now we get into places like this where you've got all your stuff. Well, we don't have to contaminate it. We take our tool. This is where 90% of your roaches are going to be, especially underneath your sink. And the reason is, the lower, the lower to the floor, closer to food, the closer they are to water, the more activity they're going to be. So let's say the roaches are in here. Well, we're going to take it, put it there. And we find roaches there. And then we find roaches down here. And we're going to take it, see a little crack right there. I don't know if you can see it. Right there. All right, we're going to get the hinges. Put the product in the hinges. You're saying that is enough product to kill them. That is enough product. You don't, I see a lot of people putting, buying over the counter roach bait. They're putting it like it's, you know, caulking. There's no need to contaminate any of this. The roaches will find it. They will eat it. Now we move down here to what is known as the kick plate. And down here, there's also little cracks all along. So we'll take our bait. All right. And we're just going to place the bait so they can easily find it while they're walking in the lower areas and in the lower cracks. All right. And we're going to do that all along every cabinet, every place. So now that we've got the cabinets, especially here, underneath your sink is usually the place where you have the most roaches. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to reach. See, this apartment... You can look in here. We've already done the ceiling because we've already treated this apartment before. You see that? Let me see if I can point to it, get out of the way. So how do you know you had, you've had a German roach problem, a German roach infestation? This is part of the maintenance. But if you can see in here, see this drywall right here? I don't know if you can see the dots. Can you see the dots? You can get closer there. See those little dots, like that dirt that's on the wall? Okay, so what this dirt is, is basically excrement from German roaches. It's more important to seal. See the seal right there that we did, that white stuff? Let me take some of this stuff out. All right, see the foam? And there's that foam. We sealed it because in apartments, all of the plumbing is shared from the unit next door in the electrical, especially the unit above and the unit below. If we seal it, we stop a lot of the roaches from coming across. This, this had a serious infestation by the evidence on that drywall. And over time, they just were thousands of them. So we're going to get, you know, what do you do? Well, you know, a, a lazy person won't get in the back. But we'll get in here. And we're going to put this all the way in the back of the cabinet where they are hiding, where nobody is going to see them. If you don't get your head in the cabinet and you don't look for it, and you don't look for those hiding places and inspect them, and, you know, we're going to, I have two flashlights, carry one on my forehead so I can look inside dark places, 
And then I got a hand light that I can, you know, light up corners. And we're going to see and we're going to inspect to make sure there's no live roaches walking around in here. Okay, and there doesn't seem to be any. Most important thing around this sink, roaches will get on the bottom part of the sink all the way around and there's cracking crevices. I don't know if you can look inside there, but look at what the bottom of a sink looks like. Okay, and everywhere that a roach would hide, we got to go in there and put a product. So we're going to put it way back in there, in that crack. See that canal? This canal right here? All right, and behind that canal, they love to hide because that is a support little beam, and the roaches have a place to hide back there. So we want to put it directly in their face so they don't have to go far looking for food. They will find our food right next to them. All right, so now that we're done baiting, let's say, all the cabinets, and we've gone inch by inch on those cabinets, all right, we're done with our bait. We're going to use a secondary bait. There are places we can't reach. You're going to find roaches all around inside in the back of a dishwasher where there's humidity and heat. We're going to use a, a dust bait that's going to be back there, and we're going to puff it. And we're going to put it back there so we don't have to. The, the roach is going to find it. And we're going to puff it back there. We can always, the area is accessible. You know, here, so it's just a lot more comfortable to do this. You know, I'll find, like, if there's a little area, like, accessible, we can put the bait. All right. See the little feet on the, on the dishwasher? We'll put some in the little feet. You don't have to be worried about pets and children because the amount of chemical or active ingredient that is in this product, it is designed for the weight of that roach. Um, so there's no chance of a dog going in there and licking that product, getting his head in there. It's completely out of their way so that none of that happens. We don't contaminate any of that. There's nothing on the floor where a dog is going to touch it. Now we're going to get into a little bit of birth control to control eggs and control the nymphs from being able to hatch over time and control them by introducing a hormone. This is an insect growth regulator. It's a hormone. And the insects have what are known as juvenile hormones. This is how they'll be able to hatch. And when they're born, they create an exoskeleton called of a product called chitin, which is nothing more than a polymer of sugar. And what they'll do is they'll molt and become adults. This stops that process by introducing a hormone. Unlike adults, this juvenile hormone needs to be lost. We lose hormones and get older. Roaches need to lose the hormone in order to get to the next stage. By keeping the hormone active in the environment, we prevent them from becoming reproductive adults. There's no spraying, there's no contamination. We don't have this hormone. It doesn't affect humans. It only affects the insect. We snap this into place. We take the little glue off. We go over here into a high corner where nobody touches it. And we place, just glue it up in there. And we just leave it there. And every three months, when we do the maintenance service, we're going to replace that hormone. This is what's going to keep your apartment from getting reinfested over time. And that product will last up to three months in there, active. And then it, we won't have another roach infestation. All right, so we've got two baits. All right, so now we're going to get into things that are overlooked. Well, how did they come here? Well, we know that they came in through the pipes. We sealed the pipes to prevent roaches from the other unit. What happens with a lot of times is, People get a roach infestation, and what they do is they set up foggers and bombs and sprays, and what that does is it causes them to go scampering into the next unit. By sealing that off, we stop that process. What we got is outlets and electrical conduits. So oftentimes we will open this up in here, and we have to treat behind there because if we ignore the infestation there, there's voids, there's cracks, so what we do is we take one of our baits and we will put it underneath into the wall 
and we'll pump it in there. This will put product into the wall so when they're coming across, they will find a bait product and not want to come in here. If we do find roaches in there, then we simply put a little bait in that crack and then we'll eliminate the infestation in here. If we spray the floor and this is never checked, then what will happen is we'll be killing roaches and they'll still keep reproducing and coming out of there. So we want to prevent that. And that's one of the steps that we take to make sure that we protect this unit from another infestation. We don't want to have to repeat this process again. There's obviously, you've got microwaves and the same thing, we would treat the back of this and microwaves are notorious, electronic equipment for getting roaches, we can actually just treat it, not having to contaminate the inside of the microwave with four dots. The roaches will find it. We can put it back, it's life is normal. We'll put this back. All right, so another one, a big problem that nobody wants to do is look behind the stove. It's a lot of work to pull a stove sometimes. If this was a gas stove, we couldn't pull it because if we pulled it and we broke the gas line, we would have a serious gas leak and we wouldn't do it. We would have to figure out a way around it. Being that this is an electric stove, usually we can pull it and get it and get it out of the way. The, most stoves will easily slide forward. All right, so there's a lot of places. Remember I talked about cracks inside the cabinet. This is what your cabinet looks like. There's evidence there of roaches, the little dots that roaches were here. Okay, in here there's cracks all along this. So we have to treat every single inch of this. We would go in here. Treat the back of here, the back of there, there, there. We're doing there, we're gonna do there. See the crack down here? You know, roaches are gonna get in there and live. They love to live in places like this. So we're gonna treat that. We're gonna to go to the bottom, the plate when they're coming out, treat all around it. You know, in there, all up here, all the way around. You see them coming out of everywhere. So all this has now been treated we're going to treat the back of the stove. You got all kinds of little cracks and crevices. Putting the product. You don't need that much. On the little hinges. All the way around the kitchen. So the roaches that are in your stove are going to come out. Also, places might have large American roaches. All right, so what we're gonna do back here as a preventive is we have a glue board, a sticky trap monitor that's gonna tell us what's in this unit over time. So when we come back, we can always inspect it and look at it and we'll just put it back here behind the stove where nobody's gonna touch it. And those are our eyes and ears where we're not here. So if we got a mouse, if we've got a large roach, if we've got fleas, if we've got something, that's gonna be the one that's gonna tell us what's here because sometimes people do not see what's in their unit all right so we'll push the stove back and you know this is a really clean unit so not a lot of problems with competing with our food a lot of people well won't you create a resistance if you use the bait it won't the roaches just you know not eat it. Yes, if, if there's a lot of dirt, there's a lot of food, grease, it competes with our, makes our, our job hard, harder. The cleaner the place is, the least amount of contamination there is, it makes our job a lot easier. Um, there is no chances, unlike in restaurants, where you're going to get resistance to the product because this is a one time and done deal. Once we get rid of this problem, the roaches won't have an infestation again. Remember, German roaches are are domestic, they're purely domestic. They don't live outside. Um, unlike Asian roaches that look similar and live outside or palmetto bugs that live outside, they're purely domestic. They have to be brought in with something. So either you bought a box in when you moved, you had them in your old unit, 
um, you bought a piece of furniture that was used and it had the pest inside, you had like a, a, an appliance, like a used microwave that you got and the roach came with it. The neighbor got it and then you got it. But once we get rid of it and we get rid of it in the other units, it doesn't happen again until it's reintroduced. You got places that people ignore all the time. The lighting. Roaches will get up there and make a home and you'll see them in your lights. So we'll just bait around it with our tool. As you can see, this takes a lot more time than spraying, but this is what ensures that we get the control very, very quickly. Boxes in your house when you have roaches is a no-no. Why? See that corrugate? Those little holes, that's called a corrugate. German roaches love to go in that corrugate and live. So do silverfish. So if you've got boxes in your house from a move, the moment you move in, you want to throw this out and you don't want this in your house. If you're buying food from a wholesale place and you're bringing boxes in, you want to get the boxes out as quickly as possible. This is a major problem for German roach infestation. So what we got to do now is we got to move that fridge because we got to inspect the back of that fridge. German roaches love going behind fridges. Why? There's heat, there's water from condensation of the coils, and there's food available to them. That black mold stuff that grows all over the coils and in the pan is bacterial food that's broken down and roaches can survive on that bacteria that's growing, that mold, and therefore they're gonna be back there. What we try to do is if we can move the fridge, which most fridges will move very easily. All right. And seeing if we can get back here all right. All right. So we're going to get our little body back here and I'm going to get my, my bait and you've got the same problem. We've got an outlet that we're going to pull out and we're going to treat with two baits, one inside the wall, one for the roaches that are right there. We're looking at, let's get this out of here. See the crack right there? I mean, 20, 30 roaches can live in that little crack right there. So we'll put it inside, put the bait. We're going to come down here. Same thing along the side. Bait it all. I'm going to go underneath. Bait it. No need to bait around here. There's no cracks, no crevice. If we find a crack or crevice where the roach is hiding, we're good. See that there, right there. That's a crack that needs to be treated. So the technician is trained to look for all these signs and look for all the places where the roach can hide and treat it. Got the back of the refrigerator, just like the back of the stove. See, this has been treated before. And we're going to put it in the little cracks where they're going to go. Sometimes the refrigerators have that backing, the cardboard backing. That's usually infested. We have to remove that backing because it's totally infested with roaches and we can't get to it. So what we want to do is we want to get to the places where they are all around the fridge so they'll find the bait. We'll use our product and we can take the inside of that pan and we can put the product in the pan where the roaches are going to want to be. And we're going to get our body out of here. You know, and on top of this cabinet right here, same issue. They're usually, if you have, if you have roaches behind the fridge, you're going to have roaches in that cabinet. So we can get and put the bait. You know, if we have a little cracking crevice, luckily I'm five ten, so it makes it a little easier. All right, and we treat that. What are we going to do when we come back? We're going to do the same thing again on the follow-up. It all depends on the level of infestation, but normally 
we're going to come back in 15 days if it's a heavy infestation. If it's a mild infestation, we're going to come back in 30 days. Okay, so we come back in 30 days. What are we going to do? Take our flashlight out. Ugh. When, anytime you put a refrigerator in or up against a wall, you want it to be four inches from the wall approximately to allow it to breathe. That's what the manufacturer recommends. You, want, you don't want that compressor getting hot. So if you've got German roaches in an apartment and you've had holes in the wall and that's been dealt with, um, chances are you've probably seen American roaches, you've seen large roaches. Um, they're different. They're, they don't behave the same way. They're not in the same family. Um, they like to hide in places down here, the voids, what is known as a void in the wall. Once we seal that big hole, they're behind that wall, but they can't make it through because they're really big. But they might still be here. Nymphs might still be in there. So, But with the bait, we're going to deal with the nymphs. But the adult roaches are hiding. They're hiding behind that dishwasher hole. They're hiding in this hole. So what we're going to do is very simply look for the hole that the, many, you know, the, the, the builder left and put a hose in there. And we're going to put a bait product that is a granular bait product just to deal with large roaches. And we'll do the same thing like behind. There you go. And it's just behind there. They're going to find it. They're going to eat it. They're going to die. And that problem should be temporary. It should not keep reoccurring. But, you know, we're going to go ahead and treat it. And that's the way we would do it if you had two different types of roaches. There's absolutely no need to spray anything in your home to get a roach problem resolved or many other problems in the home like ants. There's absolutely no need to spray. Um, we're going to come back in 30 days, 14 days. We're going to do a complete inspection again and see where we find live roaches and where we don't. We will most likely treat the whole thing exactly again to make sure that we got enough product. One of the things that we have to look out for is those eggs. Those eggs are going to hatch. It takes about six weeks for an egg to hatch. We're talking 30 to 40 roaches close by per egg. If you've got 100 females in here, that's easily four or 500 roaches that are going to hatch in the next 30 days. And we have to deal with that. If we don't do a follow-up and we don't do the same thing again in 30 days, we will not get the control and you will be back here in three months again with the same infestation you had originally. So the second service has to be done, most likely a third, depending on the level of infestation. Not every unit is the same. Not every unit has the same level of infestation. It is based on evaluation every time we come. So the typical apartment takes about two services. When it's heavily infested, about three. That's been the app. So as you can see, this is how we perform a German roach, and American large roach service in your apartment where there is absolutely no need for spraying or any type of contamination. Again, we do it the same way that they do it in hospitals, in government buildings and schools where you don't know if people are sick, you don't know if people are sensitive to chemicals, we can control it without any contamination. For more information, you can always visit our website at naturepest.com and you should be able to receive, along with this video, your quote on how we do it and we look forward to serving you. Again, this is Frank with Nature Pest, wishing you a pest-free day.